THM The Show presents me, Pablo Gunner, and my guests right here from the podcast that wouldn't die. What's up? This is Kevin. And this is Aaron. We're here to talk nerdy to me. We're going to talk nerdy to each other about nerdy things, of course. We got some Quantumania. Did, did you both see Quantumania? I saw Quantumania. I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> it's uh, the third Ant-Man movie. Well, it's it's weird to say third Ant-Man movie because there's Ant-Man, then there's right. Ant-Man and Wasp was, was the sequel. And so does this make it Ant-Man and Wasp 2 or does it make it Ant-Man 3? And that's why I just call it Quantumania. Oh, shit. And this is, this is like a philosophical question we're talking about here. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> spiritually... I would say it would have to be the the third of the trilogy. <laughs> Although I have to be honest, I feel like the quality has dipped with each with with each film. I, and what, you didn't start you... with a high mark, if I recall, to begin with. I liked the first one quite a bit. I thought it was a lot of fun. Paul Rudd was funny. I enjoy Paul Rudd. I like when Ant-Man appears in little cameos in other films, in other more successful films. <laughs> That's how I like Ant-Man and Paul Rudd. I actually, I feel like I'm at the point where I need to rewatch a lot of the older movies because when I watched them, I was way more into comics. I was super anal. I was younger, so I like right. cared way too much too. Whereas now I'm just like, you know what? I'm just here for a good time. I'm, you know, I, I don't care. Like, yeah, there was a lack of, like, I feel like there's a huge lack of a character arc in this, uh, in this film. Like, yeah, by the end, I but am going to do something Rudd with my life, but... Paul Rudd character arc. <laughs> Come on, man. First of all, how dare you? You're, you're, you got to lower those expectations. <laughs> Paul Rudd's really good at being Paul Rudd. You're saying he's not Denzel? Is that what you're saying? He is no Denzel. But more likable than a Costner. Where were we at? Talking about Ant-Man. Ant-Man, yes, and his lack of, his, Paul Rudd's lack of character arc and development. Well, I, that's the thing is, I is that like his lack of, of acting ability? Because I feel like that's more writing. Because I did, to me, they didn't write it in to the movie. And now I know like people complain about the visuals and stuff. For me, that's for me that's my big bugaboo because I've gotten into writing and, and I'm trying to do writing myself. That I go, where was where was the arc? Like, did anybody real have an arc in this? The the older generation kind of did, but it wasn't big. Like once again, any any character arc or development in this was very small. Right. I, I read somewhere that the purpose of this movie was really to set up the Kang character. As being the next big bad. Like it's it's a two and a half hour kind of post credit scene. It's kind of what they were going for. Who's Kane? Is that Snatch the Pebble from my hand, Grasshopper? <laughs> Not K A N G. Oh. He the bat well, you didn't see the goddamn movie. <laughs> the, the yeah. The, <laughs> but you watched Loki season one, I'm assuming. Is that is that correct, Aaron? Yeah. Oh for two. <laughs> No, she, yeah. He, I at least know who Loki is. Well, Jonathan Majors, it was who was dynamite, frankly, in Loki. He was he was so good. Of course, now he's dealing with all sorts of issues, like in his personal life. So who knows if he's going to be back? The problem is, is that there's, I guess, because of the multiverse, that there's ten million can out there so it, it's hard to know is there any connection between this kang and the kang from loki or are they totally unrelated this multiverse shit it is it is crazy this sounds it is worse crazy. Than, than the young and the restless i mean this this is pure soap opera bullshit that, that and then there true. was an evil twin and a weather machine <laughs> there was a ghost absolutely that's how they, I tell my wife, it's like comic books and soap operas are basically the same thing. Yes. More case, basically. More spandex uh, in the comic book. Well, and, and the other thing, because I, I basically stopped, I was really into comics in the late 80s. And I basically stopped in the early 90s. So it's hard, you know, keeping that in mind. I just find it interesting, the characters that are huge parts of the mcu uh you know huge parts of the avengers that in my experience characters that were not that important to the avengers in the actual comic books and and again there was there's a space where things could have drastically changed like black widow was not that important 
in the, in the comic books that I was familiar with. Conversely, Hawkeye was hugely important, you know what I mean? And yet in the first Avengers movie, he's, he's like kind of an afterthought. So you wonder if, how important is it to adhere strictly to the comic book, you know, backstory? You know, it's kind of like you were talking about with Star Wars. The kind of uncanonical, that's not even a word, canonical? The uncanonical, uh, you know, uncanonizing. Hey, what am I trying to say? What, what when, they, when they change the old stories into being kind of not with within the you know the stories. Uh, I mean, this is the same argument as books to movies. I was hardcore Stephen King, so I was in a rage with all the changes in The Shining. That's true. This I is the tale as old as time. <laughs> right. I come to the point where I've accepted that they're completely different mediums. Yeah. And right. It's updated times, and and you, it's it's not like comics. You can keep the same character. For 50 years you can't keep rdj for 50 years you know it's like the guy starts yeah. when he's 50 you can't keep him until he's 100 you know there's no way that's true so exactly. that's so you have to change just based yeah. off of that and just with the times update things what doesn't change is storytelling is character development is character arts. that's true disney has money but they are allocating it all over the place right like oh we're gonna put some to the visual, you know, into Star Wars over here and this over here and that over th So it's like... Indiana see, Jones. Right. You're seeing it in other places and they're going... I, I've even heard they've had issues with that where they go, well, we got moved from this project to this project. So that's why this project doesn't look finished and stuff. And like, that's why I go, you know what? That's fine. I understand. Well, even that, I go, that's TV. This is TV budget, movie budget. Right. Yeah. It always comes down to me is did the character change and, and the other characters in there? Like, well, of right. course, the main character... But it's like the main character shouldn't be changing the least. And I go like, you definitely could have put it in there and you didn't like that. It just, it seems lazy. It wasn't, I don't feel like it was horrible, but it just felt lazy where it was like, yeah, it was okay. Could have been better. Frankly, you know, since Endgame, I've been mildly to very disappointed in every movie I've seen by the MCU. You know what I mean? There was a time where I felt like they could do no wrong. Frankly, even the ones people were like, well, that movie kind of sucked. I was like, work for me. I still kind of dug it. Um, Kevin has very low expectations. That, that's a lie. <laughs> that's liable. But it, 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 it feels, what you're saying is absolutely true. It's like, you feel like the, the, the storytelling has gotten kind of lazier in, in, uh, as time has progressed. And some of that I wondered, was it just oversaturation? Like there's so many projects in the hopper especially if you if you have uh disney plus where you have to and you have to watch every single one of those shows they had like seven shows last year we we're just like gee i mean do i have to watch all even the ones i don't really give a damn about i have to watch those too mm. i have to watch the cartoon what was it uh the what if i mean is that tie in yeah evidently it does as well <laughs> otherwise you're just kind of like who are these characters who's this surprise cameo you should be able to go back to the basics and tell a good story, have interesting relationships between the characters. There should be an arc of some sort. Hero's journey, perhaps. Uh, journey. And they're not really doing an effective job of it lately. I personally, I, I've, I'm a defender of this phase because to me it's just phase one, but it already has a little bit build already. Movies that were in phase one that didn't really do that well, I go, well, they still had character arcs. I mean... Thor wasn't mm -hmm. huge, but it, he started as a doucher, and then he was not a doucher at the end. That's an arc. Thor, Thor was fun. They're like you said, they're rushing stuff. They're definitely rushing yep. this thing, and it's like just spend a little more. They want to the make money. their money as fast as they can before you all lose interest. Before everyone gets too old, too. Like that's the yeah. thing is, let's get that's actors true. as young as possible. Get them stuck in these contracts so we we own them as long as because like even like Samuel Jackson, it's like how old is he? And it's like I think he, I think he had so many under his contract i think he's finally done after secret invasion or, or the marvels or something and i'm like he's 97 years old yeah for god's sake yeah. it's like man, we're gonna... <laughs> i don't know he's that old but yeah like you're 70, right he's... he's 73 years or something like that but 97 yeah. he looks great for 97 he's doing all right <laughs> uh, they're gonna have to do that kind of the irishman uh kind of uh, oh god thing. that was so terrible where it's like here's young robert de niro whose body is like moving like an old man yeah it's <laughs> uh, they're kind of falling into that trap which uh affected uh the dc movies 
frankly, like you're talking about. We're there in a hurry. Mm-hmm. We can't we can't let it simmer on on the on the stove. We gotta throw it in to flame broil it to get it going. So we're just shoving as much as we can, and that's not that's not a recipe for success. Truly. Well, I, I want to say uh, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate for joining me on this on this little quest to talk nerdy. What what all do you do on your podcast? What do you talk about and cover and get into? We're the podcast that wouldn't die. We typically talk about horror and sci-fi films. Mostly horror. Twist. Mostly, okay. It's probably 80-20, maybe, wouldn't you say? <laughs> horror to sci-fi. I mean, we in all honesty. It's more sophisticated to say we also review science fiction. We, we do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our next movie that we're going to talk about is The Last Starfighter. So we're trying to, to thread it in a little more if you haven't seen that lately. And we haven't either. So we're going to check that out for the first time in 30 years. Oh, you haven't seen that? I thought that no. would be a pure Kevin thing. It is a pure Kevin thing. No question. <laughs> we pick these movies. Oftentimes they're movies from our youth, as you might imagine. And we try... we tend to goof on it because we're trying to be kind of humorous but i think we're fairly respectful except for aaron maybe yeah i'm not respectful <laughs> you have to earn my respect and you're not earning it with some of these films that are coming out damn it t- that's that's How dare you we have a good time okay yeah I, I mean from from your title i surmise that maybe like you've been doing this longer than anybody and i go like that's why it's the podcast that doesn't die but if you cover it horror that makes more sense with your title but back to our title that was a good guess but that's not why <laughs> we we used to have a youtube series the b movie club where we, it, we called it b movie and maybe it started with b movies then it was just random movies and no one watched it so so we quit we decided we have faces for podcasts so it was recommended by a nephew so we resurrected because we will not die we just keep going. We just although keep... we have a, we have a new YouTube uh, simulcast. So you, if you if you're dying to see what we look like, here you go. Enjoy. You're welcome. Because really, it costs us nothing to just put it out there. How dare you? This is a, this <laughs> is a work of art. Kevin's the editor. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, Kelsey Aaron, nothing. <laughs> so, and then if your kids uh, they they sign off to use your likenesses, they can continue it on. Like crusty old like Peter Mac Cushing Cushing that, That's the plan. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> that's the plan. Yes. <laughs> Good lord. Awesome. Well, so where can we, everyone out there, find you? We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We've been doing these WTF videos where we take uh, the craziest scene of whatever movie we reviewed that week, and we put that on TikTok, put that on Instagram. And like I said, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, and we're on YouTube. We're everywhere. There's, there's no escaping us. We'll beware. Awesome. Okay, do you have any final words? Live long and prosper. Awesome. So look forward to that for them. For us, it's all TNTM, the show, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, Gmail, Hotmail, everything. Oh, me on TikTok, Pablo Gunner, and uh, talk nerdy to me.